it's Sarah back for part three of this little summer cutting board type thing um, plum purdy designs I've got parts one and two on the way I'm having trouble with my computer actually we might have to it's just so slow and it keeps crashing when I'm trying to upload things so maybe I won't get it as soon as I hope but it'll be there eventually so before we get started, I just wanted to, I forgot to erase any tracing lines that I see, and I'm just using a plain white eraser, and I'm going to zoom in, and you can kind of see, let's see if it'll, yeah, on this little dragonfly, you can see that little white line there, it's just a tracing line, and you just gently can remove that, let's see if I see anything else, uh, Maybe a little here because it's white. It's hard to tell, but I think that was a tracing line. And that would be, I'm thinking that's it. <clears throat> I did base in my little word. I'll probably do another coat. Um, I don't see tracing. Well, maybe a little right here. Not too many tracing lines which is basically the graphite, you know what I mean? So sometimes some of that is um, left showing. And you just want to get it off there before you varnish at the end because once you varnish, you can't get them off anymore. And they're just there as guidelines. See, once Kiwi hears me talking, it's just like she has to be in here with me. Okay, so... Um, what, what do I want to do first? I want to do the little dragonflies first. So on the directions, we would kind of go according to, you know, what she has. So she has the watermelon first. Um, you know, but the dragonflies are so cute. I kind of want to do them, and they're little. So they shouldn't take too long. I'm going to do it. It's my essential oils. Uh, dragonflies. Undercoat the entire dragonfly with titanium white. I've done that. Paint the wings light pink. You can just add a little bit of watermelon slice to the titanium white to make a light pink color. And so we're going to do that. Just paint the wings with light pink. So I used red iron oxide for my um, watermelon slice. Um, I didn't have the color watermelon slice. I'm going to add a little bit of titanium white. This might still be good here, yep. So I'm just gonna make a little puddle of pink. Oh wow, that's cute. Add a little water to it to make it go a little further. We only need enough to get, and I don't know if this is gonna be enough. I'm gonna make a little more because I have three little guys here that we gotta do. See, that's too dark. I'm going to add a little more titanium white. Oh, yeah, I'm not even in the shot. I'm sorry. I'm just brush mis mixing. So I just took a little bit of this pile and put it in a little bit of that. And I'm just literally, like, mixing up a little light pink. I like this better. And this will be plenty. Make a little pile. Clean my brush off and then go in and pick some of that up. And we're gonna paint these little dragonfly wings. So just like I did the petals, I'm just gonna start at the tip and kind of just pull two strokes down. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Maybe my um computer has me flustered and my birdie see I start whispering because I don't want her to hear me isn't that weird so I'm going to do this to all my dragonfly wings I happen to love dragonflies I love all critters but for some reason I think Dragonflies are just so unique. 
the way they can just stop in mid-flight, kind of like a hummingbird. And they kind of just dodge back and forth, kind of like a hummingbird. Um, anywho, I like all critters. So there's that one. So yeah, I think we're probably going to need, I would say, our computer. And it's like Joe has laptops for work. Um, so he always has a laptop because he has to take it with him. So for the house, we've had like a regular, um, what are they called? It's just a CPU, like the regular computer. And it, it does what I need, which is not much. I just need to upload my videos. So um, I just plug my camera into it and it will upload the videos onto there and then I can convert them into MPEG or I mean um, whatever they're called the smaller see it's on automatic my I don't have to think about it because I just it just happens because I've done it so many times um, but anyway um, it just keeps crashing like I've gotten some of the video so one video so that's why I figured I'll just record again let me make sure everything's good I pushed record um, because maybe I'll be able to get it to upload if I put more videos because it's just not uploading one video out of six so it's just weird like why you won't take that video but anywho I just saw a little I wanted to make it straighter um, all right, so it says to do that to the wings and then highlight the ends of the wings with titanium white and paint thin lines on the wings, pulling from the body outward. And with the large end, end of the paint, the large, the end of a large paintbrush, dot the head with watermelon slice with a smaller paintbrush dot the dots along the base coated body with watermelon slice with titanium white and the tip of a liner brush okay all right I'm gonna let them dry for a sec they're gonna be cute so I'm probably gonna just use this looks pretty big boop maybe a little bigger boop yep I think I'll do that with watermelon slice so I'm gonna do that with um, maybe I'm gonna wait let me go get her. I can't focus. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so once those are dry, <clears throat> a tiny bit of, okay, wait. Highlight the ends of the wings, so with a tiny bit of, okay, 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 okay. I'm gonna grab my little angle brush and to f we're going to float and I mean you could probably just put a little slash of white but I'm going to float it onto the tip she doesn't specifically say to float it but I'm assuming and you know you shouldn't assume but anyhow so I'm going to corner load a little bit of titanium white onto this is a half oh a 3 8 inch angle and you're not going to be able to see it because it's white so I'm just going to blend it together um, then I will go to the piece and on this little guy put a pop of color on the end well it's actually not color is it it's just white it's really hard to see on camera but once you put all the details on it'll be good don't worry I know you're not worried you trust me and you can always use your picture as a reference to see maybe maybe the pink was much darker I haven't I didn't double check um, you know I mean I don't think so I think we're gonna be okay but yeah this white isn't really showing up so I'm gonna go a little heavier and it's all personal preference you know I mean like ugh. like I said Renee's um, work is Renee's Mine is mine and yours is yours. So we're all doing the same thing, but it won't necessarily look identical because mine is mine, yours is yours. 
but I am going a little heavier. I'm not going to um, hold back. I'm just putting a, late, a kind of a... So this is the, I'm doing over that, going over that again. I'm using a dirty Q-tip, so that's why it's um, making a mess. I mean, this is such a small little detail. Why am I getting so, right? Just chillax, Sarah, chillax. And there we go. Done. I'm done with that. Then I will do the next thing, which says paint thin lines on the wings, pulling from the body outward. And those aren't even on the pattern. So I'm going to grab my little thinnest, thinnest liner brush. And I'm going to do these with that watermelon slice, but I'm using red iron oxide. You want to make this into ink. can't make it into ink. You're just going to get it nice and fluid so it will just come off the tip of the brush. Kind of like ink out of a pen. And from the body outward, I'm just going to make, now look, this is what I do too. I can cheat. Put this down, and I don't know if you can see that. See? I have a, if you really want to see what the picture looks like. You can barely see those little lines, right? So here's another, let's see, here's another one. There, you see them much better on that one. So that's basically how you cheat when you're looking at a picture. And I'm just gonna pull a couple of little lines. Oh man, I think it's great. Can you see that? Yes. Because it kind of just gives it dimension. My brush is splitting like it's not actually that great of a tip. What do you have what do you have to say about it, Missy? Being a you're being a brat these days, Kay. You know what it is spring, so I have to just give it to her. She's just she's hormonal. I don't even really actually know if she's a girl, to be honest with you. Her posturing says girl to me, the way she eh, kind of, mm, I don't want to get graphic, but kind of what a boy would do versus what a girl would do. Anyway, um, but she's never laid an egg, and birds will do that when they're girls. So, you know, she could be a boy, but I've just always called her a girl don't know. You can get them sexed with their DNA. So if I ever took her to the vet and they drew blood, they could tell me. But I like a mystery. Now, I don't know. If we ever draw blood, we'll find, blood, we'll find out. All right. And then it says, uh, dot the dots along the base coated body with watermelon slice with a smaller paintbrush, but I'm gonna do a big one for his head. So we'll go ahead and go, oh, I need to make a puddle again. Dip dots are always best with a nice fresh puddle of paint. If you've done any dotting at all, that is a good rule of thumb. Okay, and then I'm gonna go boop. And making the sound is optional. You don't have to make the sound. Boop, boop. I like it. I like that little halo of white around it. It's fine. I'm going to go with it. Some of my circles are bigger. Like this is actually bigger, so maybe I'll double boop it. I'll boop, boop, like I'll keep booping. Made it bigger. And then this one is actually a little smaller, but I'll just boop it once. Then we're going to take a smaller paintbrush and go down. I mean, you can use a stylus, you can use whatever you want, but hey, oops, our brushes are right here on our desk. And I will start and just gradually, one, oops, one, three, four, five. Oh, I ran out. So I kind of want it to be, uh oh. It looks all right. It looks all right. Look, let's do this again. Let's look at how she did it. Can you see that? Kind of, not really. 
I think it looks good. I think it's exactly what I'm doing. Oh, der, sorry. Yeah, it's exactly what I'm doing. And guess what? It's my dragonfly. They live in my garden. S so I will make them how I see fit. And if the dragonfly police come, I think he's cute. Oh boy. And they're dimensional. I hope I don't like stick my hand in these when I'm doing other stuff. All right. Hey, happy Cinco de Mayo, by the way. All right. They are looking cute. I really like them. Okay, that has to dry. And then I think, now I'll get more excited as we go. As things get completed, it makes me happy. Um, it says to, with titanium white and the tip of a liner brush, dot tiny highlights on the head and dots. Dot the buzz lines along the top of the breadboard handle with titanium white. So that's, she means the buzz lines, these little dots, and these let go across here. And we'll wait on that. I'm gonna let these dry, but they're done basically until I highlight them. They're so cute. Okay, so let's do our watermelon. So, we're, I gotta find, oh man, I should've gotten my stencil out. I'll be right back. Okay. I found my diamonds. This is um, the Harlequin from Tim Holtz. So I think I'm gonna use that. But I also have this like X's by Folk Art. I think that could be super cute. There's just polka dots. What is this, Diane Reevely? Look how cool that would look. I think that might be cool. Maybe I should change it up and just go with this. Um, and then what about words? Maybe that's making it a little, but this is art is just another way of expressing our, our innermost thoughts onto concrete media. But it's words. That would be really cool. So use what you have. And I am going to use, hey, stop biting my ear. She's so annoying. This is a stencil brush that I got. Again, I think this is by Tracy Moreau specifically. I think I got it from the brush guys or maybe from her website because I do it. She's the one who does random acts of kindness. Um, but she that generally does do a stencil in the background of a lot of her stuff. Like this is, this is a Tracy piece. Um, trying to see, we did, it's like a faux finish back there, but and, and like see how it's spattered and everything. Like see, look, this was the uh, faux finish. That's the back. Kind of cool. I think we did like a stippling um, with um, maybe a plastic wrap or something. Anywho. Um, and then we did some detail work with pens. So she adds a little more mixed media to her designs. And Renee is a lot more just straight cutesy. And I like it. It's basic and easy and cute. You can't go wrong. All right, but I'm gonna use this, and I'm just, I think I am gonna try that. But see, look, hers is subtle, and it's just country cute with Harlequins. Why can't I make decisions? Because I have the Harlequins. I should just go with it. And I'm gonna have to move it, because I think, I could put them this way, though. Why couldn't I put them this way? She has them going up and down, but I can put them this way. There's like a hair on here. Right? Okay. So let's see what color. I'm pretty sure she's going to use some color I don't have, and that's why I was going to use Sonoma. That's why. So I'm going to get this out. And that's what I uh, base coated the word with. Now, when you load a stencil brush, it's basically a dry brush technique. So you're gonna pounce into the color and then you're gonna rub it off onto a um, paper towel. Well, you can use a sponge though, but you don't want it really saturated with paint because it'll bleed underneath and you'll lose the crisp edge of the, um, the shape you wanna get. So let's try it. I'm gonna pounce into the color. So just pounce, pounce it off, and then pounce it onto my 
All right, and I don't do this very often, so we'll just do whatever and see what happens. Okay, so I am going to lay it along the top kind of thing like that. And I have little hairs all over it. What the heck? All right, now I'm, I should practice on something, but I'm going to be gentle. And, you know, this is not the color that she said to use, so I'm hoping it shows up. And, but we just want it to be subtle. It doesn't have to be screaming at you. I think, I, I think I'm getting it. I think I'm getting what I wanted. Right, Kay? All right, let's see. Good enough for me. Good enough for me. I kind of think I need a couple over here, though. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? What am I doing? I'm trying to... Okay. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. I just need to add a tiny bit right over here. And I did not reload my brush. I didn't really want to get it on the green, and I didn't do very good at that. I got it on the green. So guess what? I'm going to get a Q-tip and just gently rub on the green. And, you know, it didn't get over there, but I'm good. Like, it's a tiny bit over there. All right, good enough. I'm good with it. And you could be sporadic, like you could only put them in a few spots. Hers are going up and down. She used different colors than me, too. But I love mine. I'm so excited. Okay. That is over with. We did that. I'm going to put this in water. I'm just going to... Actually, you know what? I'm going to put a squirt of uh, my pink soap out on my, my palette. And I'm just going to let it... I'm going to put some of that. I'm going to pounce it into there. And just let it sit like that for a minute and I'm just putting it in the water with that okay good now I'm going to it says with titanium white and a little bit of watermelon slice highlight along the curved edge of the melon transfer your line drawing for the seeds so let's look at the picture she means to highlight around this edge the curved edge so I'm gonna go I'm gonna make a brush mix again of the um, just moving my uh, paper towel off the palette paper because I'm running out of room so again I'm just gonna make a brush mix I'll probably use my good brush my big uh, this guy because I like it and I'm going to float this pinkish color that we're going to make. So I'm going to use titanium white, just a little bit, put it down, and I'm going to get some of this. This is old, but I'm going to use it to make that pink color that we kind of used for the wings. And this is a little bit uh, darker, probably. But I am a heavy hand. I just like dark color. You know, it's crazy. So, I might add a tiny bit more white. Let's just do that. And there's a lot of water on my brush. All right. I'm just going to load it in that. So, I go water. Blot on your paper towel. I have water all over me. And I'm going to go right into this and pick that color up that I just mixed. And I'm a heavy hand, you guys. But I'm going to take this and gently go oh boy it's way too dark and I'm gonna kinda just I should go a little lighter but it'll look nice because oh it's way too dark mm, I don't want to go too far see how far I can go though because I'm a I'm a heavy hand like I load my brush up and now's where you'll see where a mop brush comes in but I think I'm going to take it off. I haven't painted it in a while. That's just too dark. Oh, shit. Excuse my French, but I put my mop brush in the water, and now I can't use it because mops have to be dry. So I have to let that dry, but I have other mops. No fear. And I will get a, um, what is it called? A butt wipe. I don't know where I put them. Oh. 
and I'm going to take that off because it's just, I mean, I think it would look fine all said and done, but I can just do it better. And I just want to show you how easy it is to take that off if you don't like it. It's gone. All right, and I am going to go much, much lighter because let's look at hers. It's a subtle color change and because my color is so much darker than hers like this is a lot more pink and mine's more red um yeah it definitely is that's a big difference this is definitely red um anywho um i just want to i'm gonna go a little uh darker i'm gonna add more of am i using the right color I want to use red iron oxide. Ooh, that might not even be. I think it is though. But see how it has that like little bit of a. I don't know a different. Yeah, it is. It's the right color. All right, a little bit more of that, and mix it into here. So I don't. I don't want it to be as white. In other words, because it'll just be too much. It'll be too, 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 too much. Let's just dry that. and I'm going to load it lightly. I'm not going to overload the brush. So see, I'm saying it to myself so that I can just, I'm just picking up a little bit of paint. I'm not loading it. I'm going to blot. And we're just going to gently, see Eva, I even talk softer. Gently now, right? Very gently. Going along that little rind, crooked line. But I can still see it. I just always have. That's why I love this brush because it it has so a big water well. Like I can hold a lot of water, so it just I can float forever and ever. It just keeps going and going. And you know, over time, you'll get the feel. You know, see, I don't have um, my mop. So where is my other mop? Here it is. This is a Maxi Mop too. It's just a tiny one. It's much smaller. And if I had some water here, I could just kind of mop that up. Depending on how I load my brush. I can use a mop or I don't need a mop sometimes. So, Kurt Kiwi, you're driving me nuts. I swear. Come here. Sometimes some, I think she's telling me she has to go potty when she's on my shoulder and she'll just make that noise and then I can hit, put her over the trash can and she'll go potty. But sometimes she just poops right on my shirt and I don't appreciate it. I don't appreciate that Kiwi. She's usually very good though. Or she'll just hang her butt out real far so she doesn't get me. She gets the floor instead. Wipe it up, man. I'll tell you, pets are messy. Pets are, you know what? I don't care, though, because I love her. She's my little friend. Yes, you are, Kiwi. You're my little friend. Now I'm running out of paint, so i got to make a mix again. So I'm going to just take that red, and I'm going to put it down. I'm going to take some white, and hope for the best. That's plenty. I'm going to rinse my brush. Blot, blot, shake, reload, and finish this little. Oh boy, see how much white? Way too much white there. I gotta add a little more um, of the red. And when you mix, when you brush mix, you're always better off rinsing your brush before you go to the piece. So don't just brush mix because then you have so much paint on your brush, it's going to be a mess. So you want to rinse it and then come back to the finished mix you made if you, if you get my drift. Oh, well, it's much later, but whatever. That's what happens. That's 
what happened. Maybe the light is hitting this side of it, you know, it's making it more highlighty. I like it, and I can always pop it up a little bit more. I try to pull it back a little when I go crazy. Let's have a look at it from a distance. Definitely lighter over here, so maybe I'll just hit it a little bit on the other side because that's all dry. Just bump it up a little up here. It's okay to go back in and do what you want, do what you feel. And I'm doing a chippy choppy um, float there, but that kind of that matches better. And I do think I need some over here as well, right down the bottom. Seems like the hairs on the brush had a little. I hit some white, like it definitely. But see, I can pull it back with the with the mop. But I like that. And then, because there's even going to be a white line there, so don't worry about what, how it touches the rind. Let me zoom in and show you. Hopefully that'll focus. So it looks chippy choppy here, actually, what I just did. But that'll dry. And there's going to be a white line that kind of connects the two. Um, It'll, it'll, and at a distance, you're never going to be examining it at that close of a range. So at a distance, it's going to be fine. And I, I would like to walk it out a little further because, you know, on a watermelon, um, it's kind of brightest in the middle and then it's uh, lighter towards the rind. So I may kind of come back and lighten that up even one more time with a little bit of a wider float but for now I'm going to continue mm, it says transfer your line drawings for the seeds paint the seeds black dot the seeds with white base the rind foliage green and paint the checks along the rind with avocado all right I'm going to do that before I um put the seeds on because I have, don't I have the avocado or did I? Yes, I have avocado. And we're going to check this rind. Now, there's a couple ways I could do that. I'm going to do it. I'm just going to use a flat brush and pull them. And just using the brush, Kiwi, stop interrupting me. I'm going to see how big they are. So like one here. Oops. I could probably get a nice one out of here. Um, I must have put back my other base coating brushes. But so you would just take a flat brush. I think I'm just going to use this as a number six brush. And I'm going to load it with that avocado. So basically get that wet so that we do like a base coating load. So I'm going to kind of pick up some paint and come over here with it and just load my brush both sides. And then I'm going to turn my piece so that it's comfortable. This doesn't seem, this seems like what I based it with. So I think I need to go to the lighter color. I must have done it backwards. I'm going to take the Wedgwood, the one that I used for the um, leaves. See, because it's dark and light, and I used the dark color. So now I'm, I should have done it. I should, probably should have based it with this color, so I probably told you wrong. <laughs> but you guys can read for yourselves. You can see it and um, do what you think is right. But regardless, it's going to be fine. So I'm just taking that. And again, I'm going to load my brush, both sides, and blot. I'm going to blot because I didn't, I don't think I did. Okay. And then, which, which, I think I'm going to set my brush down on the edge and pull it towards 
the center and kind of try and pick it up in a way that um, connects it to the red. This is so fun for me. This stuff is fun for me. I don't know why, but I just like it. So again, I'm using the chisel edge to put up against the edge of the spine, of the edge of the rind. And then I can tip my brush and kind of paint it in along the edge of the white. Because there's going to be a white line that we're going to cover the connection with. So don't be so specific. All right, I'm putting you over here on your branch. Because you're just nagging me now, and it's annoying. So have fun. I have a little branch like that you get at this, the pet store that you can um, screw to the side of the cage. And I just screwed it to... Um, my little rack that I have, my little storage rack. So these are fun. And I'm just eyeballing it. Now, there's tracing. You could trace them on and put them specifically and just paint them in. But I'm just using the brush and letting the brush do the work and eyeballing it. And my checks will be my checks. And, you know, it is what it is. So you can do your way, and but maybe this is um, a way that you'd like to do it because it's kind of quick. It saves usually when I do stuff, it's because it's more efficient and less work. I'm telling you, I'm a corner cutter. It's not always good to cut corners, and that again, it's just what I'm learning about myself. And in this case, I don't think. I get any less satisfaction or any less quality of work and it makes the process a little quicker for me and a little easier and more fun because I like using the brush this way as a little tool to make I'm gonna start over here too and I'll work my way down so that I don't end up not having enough room to, um, but see that's why there's rules because see if I just started doing it without guidelines because I just jump right in maybe by the time I got back up here I wouldn't have room for um, I'm so sorry if I haven't been in the shot I'm gonna come up um, I wouldn't have had room for the one to fit right there and make it look um, like what's that word for it to look you know the same on both sides there's a word for that and I can't think of it and I think in this case um, it would definitely make it look a, a little wonky if they if the checks weren't um, what is that word see this one I made a little wider because it's on the turn I'm just hoping for the best. Usually I'm a pretty good eyeballer, but you know, in this case, I'm just using the brush as my guide and letting it shoot, like decide how wide to make the checks. So let me just go. One, two. I think I can fit like four more, so I'm just going to be careful. I haven't really added more water to my brush. I'm just working from that pile, that puddle that I made. One, two, darn it. I don't know, I'm gonna go a little more. I probably could have, I'm gonna only put two here. Kiwi, she's so annoying, you guys. She's getting too bossy, really bossy. I know. I see you. I hear you. I'm right here. Can you just like chill? I think I did it. I think it looks cute. I'm souped. I'm souped about that. All right. Then I think she's going to have us shade those. Mm. See, she says with a six inch flat brush. Yes. Paint the checks along the rind with avocado. Shade along the outer edge of the ring with a brush, a brush mix of avocado and a little bit of black green. 
and then with white and a script liner paint the line between the rind and the watermelon and then what else she is bugging me I'm gonna go ahead and trace on you know what I don't need to trace on I'm just gonna use a pencil a pencil and I'm gonna no, maybe I should trace some I'm gonna trace some God, I'm being a little specific here okay what else do I need to trace on anything no there's nothing else uh, the bow all right you know what I'll trace on the bow too so you just kind of line it up on here so you can see well I can see through my tracing paper just fine and I am going to you know what I'm going to use the light color tracing pepper because I think it'll show up better and this is a tutorial so I want you to see what I'm doing so I'm just holding that in place and I'm going to gently see I tell myself gently and I think I made these go every which way when I was doing it I don't know that these are exactly how she had it because they're not all pointing towards the center this one's pointing this way and that way and I'm just gonna make a bow but you know what I should just freehand it but I'm gonna just oh I, I, I made a so I'm just gonna go like that and like this but I'm gonna freehand the, the thingamajabis so I'm gonna paint those black and then probably the bow and this is the same color so I'm gonna get my black ebony lamp black kiwi stop imagine I had three birds at one time um, and I love them all but we did sell the other two and Maxi was my buddy he was a blue and gold macaw and man he was loud OMG you think the dogs get loud when you like you know when the when someone's at the door or a car goes by or whatever but man he would just let out now he was um dna sexed he was the only bird i had that was actually so i knew he was a boy but the other one i had pepper was an eclectus and sh he we knew was a boy because the female eclectus is red and for a long time well, so I hear, uh, they weren't sure if it was just a separate breed, but you can tell by their, their physical, they look exactly the same, only different colors. The, the girls are red and purple. They're gorgeous. And the boys are green with like um, teal feathers too. Like they have some teal underneath their feathers and they have candy corn beaks. Like their beak is... Um, dark orange to yellow to well like a skin tone but he was he was sweet and but he loved me and he was so possessive of me and he used to regurgitate all the time for me because you know birds do that which is weird because oh you know what it's not weird because you would think that would be the mom's job but evidently eclectuses are one of the birds that the dad stays home and takes care of the kids. Yes. Or, well, they don't stay home. They go catch food for the kids. So they both feed the kids. So he was always trying to feed me. And it was really gross. Because it's basically like he's just throwing up on me all the time. It was really gross. I mean, he would eat it again. <laughs> Anywho, birds, man. They're cool critters. So... And then Kiwi, she was the third. We got Pepper first, then I got Maxi. And I really wanted to adopt, but I hadn't had birds long enough to know um, how to handle a big bird. So we ended up getting a baby. And I thought, he's he was born in captivity anyway. He was going to be somebody's bird regardless. He was never going to be in the rainforest. So I had him for, I think, I want to say like 12 years. And then it just got to be too much. They just kind of started taking over. Um, 
And we decided, and I wanted to get a dog. And now I have two dogs and one bird. Actually, I have a parakeet too. That was, um, somebody gave me. They didn't want it, so I took it. So she's sunshine. She sits in the other room. And, wow, see what happens when you start adding the details? It just makes it so good. Um, speaking of which, I want to go back up to the, you know what, I also want to plug in, no, I have plenty of battery. Oh, no, I don't. i got to plug my, um, got to plug in because I think my battery is dying. Yep, I only had two minutes left and it was about to turn off. Man, I'm lucky I did that. Um, but we want to, I want to go back to my dragonflies because they are now dry and I can put the little highlights on those. It says, um, with a smaller paintbrush, dot the dots along, okay, I did that. With titanium white and the tip of a liner brush, dot tiny highlights on the head and dots. Dot the buzz dots and dots along the top of the breadboard handle with titanium white and again you want to do it with a fresh paint puddle and I am going to look at her picture again because I want to see what she did on the actual dragonfly and I do see little highlight dots they're tiny though so I'm just going to put a little dot okay so I'm going to use the tip of that little liner brush and sneak a little white out of that puddle and I'm just gonna dot oops I had a hair a little dot can you see this along the body as many as you want I mean you could put eyes if you want to put eyes she kind of just has it like a little shine mark. And I'm doing it all on kind of towards the right side. That's just how I'm doing it. And then I'll probably take my stylus let's see I'm gonna just see how perspective wise how big the little trail dots I'm gonna use my oops my bigger stylus but I don't have it at the ready I don't know where it is I got put in a different spot that's what happened so I'm just gonna have to use this one that has a pretty big dot on it and I'm gonna just do like let's see if it's on the tracing See, I'm being too obsessive. There's four, literally four dots, and there's a couple more. So I'm going to go into that fresh puddle, and I'm going to make this guy have one, two, three, four, five. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. And then this has, this kind of is going to come into um, contact with the top dot, so I don't need to be as, but this one, he kind of comes like this. Am I in the shot? Yes, thank you. One. That's something I know about myself that I actually have to count. When I make things like that, it's like I have to count. That looks cute. Um, and then I guess I can put, like, I'll use the smaller side of my stylus and just put something like that. But then the top ones are actually bigger, and I'm going to go make a big one in the middle and go down like that. And I'm going to pounce one off and then go over here cute right the details really oh god I wasn't in the shot that's why I don't like to zoom as much I mean I need to but I need to be better at making sure you're in. I'm in the shot but all those details really add oh so much okay 
Now, we're also going to make our bow and the line. So let's go back to our, because I'm pretty sure that's it. Dot the buzz lines, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so they are done. Back to the watermelon slice, it says... Plant, uh, plant the seeds. No, paint the seeds, dot the seeds with a highlight of titanium white, base the rind and paint the checks, shade along the outer edge of the rind. We didn't do that yet. With avocado and a little bit of black green. That's going to be so fun. But before I do that, I'm just going to do what I just did to the dragonfly with my liner brush, which is right here, and a little bit of titanium white, and we're just going to dot a highlight on these little seeds. Am I in the shot? Thank you, thank you very much. And it's just a random little dot. I think it looks cute, OMG. Okay, so now we can shade, and I'm gonna go down a size with my, um, sh my angle brush because it just makes it easier for me, and I'm gonna mix a little bit of black green which this is blue, where's my black green right here? With the avocado, she said, right? So the avocado is the darker green color, okay. So I could do it with just straight black green, but I'm gonna follow the directions and I'm gonna mix it. I'm gonna make a brush mix again. So I'm just gonna get some avocado, put it down, take some black green and mix them together, a little bit more black green little bit more all right and this is what I'm going to use to shade the rind I'm going to rinse my brush first clean it off and then I'll come back and pick this up so just kind of slide into it pick it up like that you don't want to get paint on the other side of the bristles I don't maybe you want to I don't okay and I'm going to just go right down this outside edge with this mix and it's going to make it look dimensional and I, if I run out I just push it towards um, the side sorry I see I've gone out of the out of the lines which is fine so I probably don't need to mop that but I'm just yeah I'm good I think it's fine I'm going to pick up a little more paint and I'm going to flip this around and go from the other corner. My brush is splitting a little so I'm going to reload. I'm going to go into water first to make sure the water is what makes your bristles stay close together. I don't like a split brush. And I'm going to put the, the paint color up against the outside of the rind. All the bristles are on the surface. It's not just the tip because you need the water too. Kiwi, that is not true. She's, she's lying, that is not true. But I'm gonna start here now and kind of just swoop up and connect those two. Nice, and then the last, ugh, I gotta reload because I my brush turned around on me. Pick up a little more of that color and right down here can't get in the shot and not stuff okay just put this along the bottom I think that's good enough let's see what else it says uh, with titanium white and a liner brush paint the white line stop it between the melon and the rind and to make the line wavy as you pull your brush press down and give a little more pressure in areas and lift up in areas of the line when you press down on your brush the line will be wider and when you lift up it'll be slimmer and then paint the ribbon of the ribbon of the melon um, after the flowers are painted it says paint the ribbon with titanium white dot the center of the knot with titanium oh okay gotcha See, I don't know why she wants us to wait till the flowers are done. That just, I don't know. It's her. She's the boss. But, um, oh, come here, Kay. My back is hurting again. I've been sitting. I've been doing this all day, so I think I need to go walk a dog. Um, but look how cute it's starting to look, you guys. I kind of, I want to hit 
see I should have done more highlighting before I did the seeds but I think we're good I'm gonna do my line so I'm gonna load that liner brush I'm gonna load this liner brush because it has it holds a lot more it's got a much longer bristle Kiwi you're driving me nuts I have apple juice And I'm going to load it with titanium white. Okay, and remember she said push down and pick up to get a little bit of a wider line and a thin line. So I'm going to go, I'm starting at the top, pushing down, picking up, basically just letting whatever happened happen. And hopefully I'm in the shot. What do you think you're doing on my desk, Kiwi? Huh? What are you doing? You're gonna bite things, I know. She likes to explore. I guess I could give her a paper clip or something. Oh, so Kiwi, I was telling you about the birds. Kiwi is a green cheek conure. And some conures and kikes, there's another, um, bird called a kike. C-A-I-Q-U-E, uh, maybe? They are so playful. Like, they will roll over on their back and have a toy in their, in their little claws. But Kiwi, she doesn't really play. Like, she's weird. She's weird. Also, oop, I got it right on the rind. Also, um, Girls aren't necessarily the best talkers. It's usually boys that are better talkers. I don't know why. So she doesn't talk. Look how pretty. Come here, dipstick. All right, now to paint the... And I'm just going to not follow the rules because that's how I roll. I'm going to take and just take my brush and push down and pick up and push down and pick up and kind of fix that end do the same thing on the other side just push down and pick up and kind of makes it look a little more ribbony doesn't it and then I'm gonna look at my picture because I just am a little bit anal and just see that it comes down a good way. Like it comes down to, where's the other um, the color picture? Don't know, I don't know where it is because I have stuff all over my desk. That is weird. Here it is. So it's kind of midway down, right? Can you see that? So again, I'm going to load my brush, make sure it's nice and slick, and oh, look, it got pulled, something got pulled through, the wet paint, probably the paper, that stinks, that stinks, but I can fix it, so we're just going to go boop, and boop, okay. So, and there's a line there, but there's going to be a dot there. So I'm going to go like thin, thick, thick, thin. And the same thing on this side. Thin, thick. And there's like a, um, a big dot that we're going to do with our paintbrush, but I'm not going to do that yet because I don't want to put my finger in it because she said not to do this until after the um, flowers. So let's just see what the flowers say. Um, ba -bum -bum -bum. Base coat the smaller leaves um, that hang. I did that. The stems and vines are full of green. Shade the darker sides of the leaves with avocado and highlight the lighter sides of the leaves with a mix of sand and a little bit of marigold. So remember I used um, antique white for sand and marigold. So that's going to be and see, I still have marigold on my palette from when I base coated. I can actually, there may be some paint under there. If I take the end of this brush and I just lift up that little skin that gets, so there's wet paint there. 
that's all. I mean, if you're super lazy or cheap like I am. <laughs> Anywho, um, so we're going to do the leaves. So I'm going to take my, this is a 3 8 inch angle, and first avocado, which I have out here. Um, I might as well use the marigold because that might dry up now that I've opened it up. Let me grab the um, antique white because it said brush mix. So it just doesn't want it to be too yellow. So I'm just going to take and make a mix of the two colors. By mixing, she's making it so that we don't have to have a million colors. We're using what we have out. Like this, this is this is a good piece because a lot of times decorative painters don't mix colors. Like we're bottle babies. Every color we use is in a bottle already mixed. And so this is kind of rare that you're doing it this way. Now let me look at the picture to see what side of the leaf is highlighted. She kind of has the highlighted side being towards the inside of the piece. So it would be the left side of that one, the right side. So that's what it's looking like to me. So I am going to follow her lead and do it that way. And I'm just side loading into that color and I'm going to start at the top of the leaf and pull down. So I'm sticking the color on the point pushing my brush down the side and it looks kind of yellow like I'm not loving it maybe I should go a little more um, what is it sand I, and plus I went out of lines so I'm just taking that off take a second I think I am gonna go a little more um, sand so I'm just adding a little bit more sand to that and it won't be as yellow it'll be more brownish I guess yellowish brown dude like seriously I don't know what you want Kiwi I really don't I don't understand I try to be your friend you know what I'm gonna give her a toothpick that's the one thing she'll chew apart a toothpick but she doesn't really play with toys there she took it um, she just wants what I have. She's like a child. You want what I have. It's so annoying. she got to get a life, Kiwi. Get a life. All right, so I'm going to pick up again that little mixture, which isn't really enough, um, and I'm going to have to keep remixing it. It's not as yellow and it's not really as bright either. I mean, I'm just going to go into the straight. Um, marigold. Maybe I want it to be more yellow. I actually think it shows up much better when it's yellower. So I'm going to go, I'll stick with that. you want it to show up this time see I can start at the bottom and I can start at the top so and I'm getting a little tired because I've filmed this all in one day so take your time make sure you're fresh and ready to paint if you start getting tired you'll start getting sloppy you don't want that you want to have a nice finished piece when you're done so just take your time mm. And if you don't like it, pick it up and, and do it again. Do it later when you feel better. You know, you don't have to like what you did. If, if you feel like you could do better, do better. So it looks like I highlighted all of those. And now I'm going to come down here and do these. I guess it just depends on which side of the piece the thing is or whatever how I approach it you know like what whether I go from top to bottom or bottom to top like this one I'm right-handed so it seems like I go I just do it the, towards the left 
however the leaf ends up is if it's on the left I'll do it that way and then I guess I got to do all these little guys So on this side I'm starting at the bottom and on this side I'm starting at the top because that just happens to be the left side of the leaf. And then I'm doing, I'll do the bottom um, little ones too. Just a tad. Kiwi, honestly, honestly, dude, you're killing me, dude. Now, when we put the shading on, it's going to be such a dramatic change. I don't know if this one seems light enough, so I'm going to come back and just put a tad more on this one. And I think the rest of them kind of look like brighter on that side. But let's see. Yep, that looks good. And then it said to take the black green and a mix of avocado, but I'm so lazy. Maybe I'll just do it black green, but it's going to come out so dark. Um, I have avocado out here, so I'm going to make a puddle and add some black green to it. And that'll be plenty, but definitely rinse your brush. This is dark color. So I'm going to go in with a fresh, clean brush and just swoop over into this puddle here that I just made of the color. Pick it up from my palette. And we're going to do the opposite side, kind of closer to the bottom as well. Like I might not pull it all the way to the tip because... Um, I don't know, usually the end of things is uh, more light. I don't know why I say that, but you know, hey, it's just a theory I have. Oh, now you're going to pull my hair. But look, I just pushed that all the way to the tip. So let's see what that looks like. It looks decent. Decent. So I'll, I pulled it away. Um... No, I think the I think of the base of the leaf, but she said side and side. She said one side, one side, like not bottom and top. So I am going to follow her lead on this one. Hopefully I'm in the shot, guys, because I'm trying to paint. And I forget what I what the camera's doing, you know? I get caught up in this and the focus and I'm not thinking about where my camera is but I think we're good right now not zoomed in so far that it's like every slight little move I come out of the shot nice see so far look how that gives it dimension love it okay and then I just got to do these bottom ones I think I'm running out of paint. Let's go, let's go. We are getting there. Thank you, Renee, for creating this little cute summertime project. It's almost summer, guys. What is it, Memorial Day or Labor Day? I always get them mixed up. I think it's Memorial. It's in a couple weeks the official. Man, what a weird year this is, though. We're going to have to see what happens. I really want to go to the beach. We have a pool, so I'm very lucky in that way, so we'll be able to have that regardless, but last for the last two summers, I've been, I was going to the beach more because my brother loves the beach. He's a surfer, and um, 
I, I really wanted to, like, it's kind of one of those things where you, when it's in your backyard, you don't use it. Like when I, I grew up at the shore and I get burned. So it's one of those things where I'm not like a sun worshiper, but I do love the ocean and I love the seagulls and the noise and the wind and the waves and all that good stuff. And that was something that I was able to share with Richie before he passed. Um, he taught Maya to surf last summer. Well, you know, he gave her a couple of lessons. I don't know how proficient she is at it, but um, we just had fun. I have good memories there. And I'm lucky enough to live near the ocean, so I want to go check it out. Go to the ocean from time to time. I think I live about 20 minutes away now. If I get on the expressway, I can be there pretty quick. All right, so that's that. And I mean, I could darken it up. I think it looks pretty good. Let me pull back. The top ones look really good. I'm not sure about, these could probably get darkened up a tad, but let's see what else she wants to do to them. Um, paint the center vein of the leaves with black green and dot the white clusters of flowers along the vines at the bottom of the melon with titanium white. Oh, cute, look, I forgot about that. See these little clusters of white? See those little things? She's just pulling the dots down to balance the piece. It's so cute. All right, so I'm gonna take that black green and make it a little more inky and make um, a center vein for my leaves. Gently, I don't wanna overdo it, but I hope I'm in the shot. Oh good, I zoomed up. Did she, yeah, she did this one, she did this. Kiwi, you don't need to get my brush, dude. Dude, what are you doing, dude? It's so fun adding the darks and lights. It just makes it, man, it makes it pop. I love it so much. I'm just trying to let it be curvy. I mean, it could be straight, that's a look. I'm just kinda, I think I'm going in the direction the leaf kind of is pointing, sorta. So this one's kinda pointing this way. Trying to leave off with a point at the end, like a thin little, this one didn't have one right here, but whatevs. It's whatevs, okay. Like this one's dipping this way, boom, I like that. And then this one is gonna go this way, boom. All right, let's take a look. I'm gonna darken these up. I'm gonna shade them one more time off camera. Okay, then, are they done? Oh, we gotta do the little dots down here. Yep, okay, the flowers. Base the centers um, with marigold. Highlight along the tops with titanium white. Oh, see, this is awesome. I love that we're not like breaking out new colors all the time. I just can use what I have on my palette. But I'm running out of room. I'm gonna get my big, oh man, should I? See, I can't be trusted with a big brush because I will go nuts. I will go nuts with this color. Well, it's white. White is, white. white is good. Okay, ready? Let's see, do I have some nice clear? Oh, yes. Kiwi. You're going to be, you're in trouble because you're really a nag. I don't know what you want. Okay, so let me sh show you this. Oh, man, this is going to be bright. All right, I'm gonna back off a little. I'm just, I just backed off the color a little and blotted. But what you wanna do is swoop up. So I'm gonna put the brush down along the side here, okay? So I'm gonna put it down and swoop. So just push all the pet, all the um, bristles, I should say. And you need the water too, so that it graduates down. That did good, I think I like that. We'll do that to all these little suckers. Swoosh it up and swoosh it down. 
and one more time. Swoosh. Oops. Side effect. I mean side effects. Sound effects are fun. They're fun. And again, I like to make it pop. I mean, it's showing. It is showing up. But um, let's see what the bottom it says. I'm going to go up because, again, you can't see. Uh, the bottoms with burnt sienna, my favorite, favorite. I love burnt sienna as a brown. Oh, man. It's like a reddish brown, and I love it. I do, Kiwi. You can't stop me. No, I don't believe you. I don't know what you're saying, but you're annoying me. It's this little, like, she's just like, she wants something. I, I definitely think that's like, hey, she's saying something. It's not... Uh, she, at least she's not yelling. Oh, I had white on my brush. Dang it. Look at that color. OMG. I love it so much. Look at the... Oh, I love burnt sienna. It's my favorite. I love it so much. Okay. So I'm just corner loading the brush. This is what we do every time we want to float color. Do the same thing. It's very repetitive. Um, and I'm going to swoop this in again. Use a dirty q-tip okay so I'm gonna start on the side and I'm gonna swoop it down so put it down all the bristles though not just the tip the water too and then you swoop up and leave it right there so I don't have to clean up any water lines it's a little trick I know okay same thing swoop and oops I'm trying to get close to that bottom and over and I can just go straight like whatever but I just like I love floating so much it's actually I get it like it's hard it's but once you understand the process like what you're trying to do it gets fun so don't give up I'm going into straight black green real quick because I just want to set these down a little better because they were kind of not they're kind of just too uh something i don't know what they are but and i'm gonna tap it i don't want to this one actually is darker but i'm just gonna use the same load of paint and i don't want it too much yeah i think that's better You know, I could get a clean Q-tip, too, and that would probably help. But I just like that better. Okay. Now, do you think that highlight is bright enough? I do. I think it's, I think it's good. I could brighten it, but, all right, let's see what we do with these petals. Paint the center vein. I did that. Okay, okay. Paint the petals and brush with a brush mix of burnt sienna and marigold. Paint the thin lines on the petals. Pull from the center of the flower and that's it. Nice. Shade along the bottoms and dot the tops of the centers with titanium white. So that's this little. So we're going to put white dots up there anyway. So I don't need to brighten it up. It'll be fine. But what we're going to do is we're going to make... A mix, a brush mix of what did she say? Um, marigold and burnt sienna. Is that what she said? Paint petals, brush mix of burnt sienna, yeah, marigold and burnt sienna. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of this marigold that is barely alive over here. It's barely alive. I could get some more out, I suppose. Why not? I'm just very cheap, evidently. And you know why? Because you can't find it when you need it. So I'm putting marigold out and I have the burnt sienna. And again, I'm just going to brush mix a little puddle. So I'm grabbing a little blop of burnt sienna and a little blop of marigold. And I'm just brush mixing it into a color that turns out to be like an orange. Cute. 
rinse my brush, blot, come over here and pick this up. And then, what are we doing? Oh, I know, we're making little lines. So on the drawing, she has that. See these little lines along her petals? That's what we're doing now. So just delicately and gently like I did on my dragonfly. Little lines. They're not even lines, they're kind of just like, I'm gonna go in real close and I'm gonna really focus on trying to stay in the shot. This orange doesn't wanna um, show up fairly well on camera though, does it? Do you, orange? You're shy, camera shy. Okay. I like to pull lines toward me. So I turn my piece so that they can, so that I can do that. Let's make, I mean, three or four, and it's okay if they kind of skip a little, and I'm trying to get them to go, like that was really dark, but that's okay. I'm going to see what happens. Maybe some will be dark and some will be light, but I am i don't want to push. I just want to use the very tip. Oh, boy. Let's take that one off. <laughs> that one got a little out of hand. A little out of hand there, Sarah. Okay. So just gently, gently, gently. I have to say it to myself because I'm such, I get very passionate about my color. I like it. I like color. So, I mean, it's just, it's just hard to pull back. Okay. And it's like, if I fill the space, I'm not worried about, oh dear, that one's a little too light. So I'm going to throw one dark one in here. But I like the, the angle of the, of the line as well is kind of giving the petal some shape and some movement. So we have one more daisy to do. Do, do, a dollop of daisy. I know you were all thinking that. As if, oh boy. My brush is splitting, but it kind of looks cool because it's getting more than one line. You know, I mean, yeah, it was not as, um, I mean, look, at a distance, you can't tell, guys, you can't. We are almost done. I'm going to go up because I want to do, I can't believe it. I think we're almost done. We are. This is it. We're in the home stretch. Because, let me go back. I'm going to go back to this beginning here and make sure I didn't forget anything. Because there was something. There may have been one more thing on that. Let me see. Shade, blah, blah, blah. Paint the line between. To make it wavy, blah, blah, blah. Paint the ribbon. Okay, so we didn't do the center of the ribbon. I'm going to do that with a big dot. I'm going to get some fresh white out. And I think this is like my biggest, ooh, this is a big one. And just go boom. That looks pretty. Nice. Okay. So do that. And then it says dot the center knot with titanium white. Okay, base coat, paint the center leaves, dot the white clusters of flowers along the vines at the bottom of the melon with titanium white. Again, I'm gonna use my stylus. And let me just look and see the picture. I'm a copycat at, at the heart of things, I'm a copycat. I get inspiration, I should say, from looking at other people's work. I just do. But I tend to do it my own way anyway, which is good because it's not good to copy, copy. Um, all right, so we're just going to go one, two, three. Because basically she's just pulling these dots. Ooh, look what happened. I got, um, oopsie, I, I must have put my hand in it when, before it was dry, so I see a little smudge. That's why she said to wait on that big one. It, it happens, guys. I've, it's, it happens more than you think. But yeah, you should always leave your dip dots for last. It's just a rule of thumb, and I will fix that after. But they add so much pizzazz, don't they? It's 
got possessed. Let's go. One. And she doesn't just go in groups of three. She's kind of hitting it here and there. Like there's a couple here. And there's a couple over here. Just random. It's the illusion of flowers. See, it's the illusion. Today. Is today Tuesday or Wednesday? Oh, it's Tuesday. Tomorrow's my anniversary. 31 years of marriage. Oh, and you know what else? Oh, anyway, yeah, 31 years. We got to put little dots on top of our um, daisies. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to use my stylus. I mean, I can get a lot of paint on here, and I might need to use a brush, actually. Yeah, I'm going to use a brush because I want to start out bigger and have and have it dwindle down. So I'm just putting a little more paint out. And let's go with this, this is good. And just go, for some reason, I have to say boop, 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 but I'm, I'm holding back. See, you guys should be so proud of me. I mean, they're huge, let me just say. They are big. So I'm gonna try and hold back a little on this one. But, you know, hey, it looks cute. I'm just trying not to stick my arm in these little ones. So let's swing it around this way. And I'm going to just get my stylus now and just add a little couple small ones to up here because I went a little cray with the bigness. And that's the thing. You can get a little cray with these. You can get... And don't try not to try not to it's hard it's really hard but you have to try okay that's all dude guys guys dudes I think we're done hold on let me let me take a look the other thing um, if you have this stencil you can order it from her um, what's it called plumperty.com um, I just traced it out she put it on the pattern so I just traced the word and painted it myself. I think I'll give it another coat. And let me just see if that's all. I'm going to read the entire dude. Look at it. OMG. Is that just the happiest thing ever? And yeah, my watermelon's dark. It's quite dark, but I really like the Harlequin sideways, right? And I used what I had. I love it. I actually really love it. It makes me super happy. OMG. And see how you can't really tell, like, the table? It, it looks fine. It's like a faux finish of whatever. Okay. So, let's see. Uh, flowers. Paint the thin lines. I did that. Dragonflies. Dot the buzz lines. Bottom band. Float some streaks, I did that. Stencil or paint the lettering with antique maroon. And that's it. And then she says, spray your piece, your painted piece, with several coats of Decor Matte Spray Finisher Sealer. Um, I'll do um, a sealing. I'll show you that, too. I might as well just do a quick video on that. It won't take long. But for now, you know what we're going to do? We're going to sign our names because we are done. Let me double check. Background. Um, watermelon, paint the ribbon, we are done, yep, yep, done, all right, I'm going to sign my name, and I'm going to sign my name, I always, I, some of you, like, my husband's name is Joe Evans, so he makes, this is his cool signature, let me show you, I don't have one, because I have an S, S's are hard to, I don't know, maybe they're not, but I haven't ever come up with a, a cool signature. I need um, my thin, thin little brush. Where are you? Here it is. I found it. So, here's Joe's. I just want to show you. So let me get some dark paint. Get some of this red. Here's Joe's. J. You can't see what I'm doing. Here's a J. A. A. Isn't that cool? That's his signature that he can put on things. I don't have that. But I have my name, which is a great name. Let's see. I'm going to sign it with... I kind of want to use... I could use the black green. Mm, oh, there's not that much out here. I 
Yeah, make sure, oh, you know what I saw? Right here, before you varnish, give it a once over real quick, because right here on the ribbon, I do see, you'll see it, ready? That little tracing line right there. And if I just go like this, gone. So take the time, give it a once over, and erase any, any, any little blemishes that may happen. Fix anything you want to fix. Um, I think it looks fantastic. I'm super happy with it. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna go slowly so you can see. It is not perfect by any means, but each thing uh, all together for the greater good, right? Makes it a thing of beauty. And so every little stroke, every little technique I did comes together to complete a really cute summertime project. All right, sorry, I'm, I'm just fussing too much. All right, let me just get some paint and I'm gonna put a little signature in black green, which here it is. And you can sign it wherever you want. You can sign it on the back. I was thinking of adding some of that to the sides, but I'm not gonna get crazy. You can always bring the design around the side. There's a hole there. Um, to make it look completely finished, you can sign it on the back. Uh, but I am going to sign it on the front, and I just usually put Sarah. So I'm going to just be delicate. I'm going to show you. Here's how I do it. Kind of chippy choppy, right? S. A, oh Jesus, sorry. The brush is splitting. R, A. And you know what is interesting about this year? If you put a 20, it almost seems like you didn't finish writing 2020. But um, I think I want to put 2020. So I'm going to turn, I'm going to put 20, mm, I don't know. I'm gonna put 2020, I'm gonna try. Maybe I'll put it on top of each other. Cause look, I can do whatever I want. You can use a pen. The only thing, and if I, if you're spraying your varnish, you're great with pen because, but if you brush on your varnish, you will put the, and the pen dissolves, the ink dissolves, you will pull it. So I generally tend to paint it as best I can and see what I'm saying, like it's not perfect. But I'm gonna put a 20, 20. <coughs> take that off because I don't like it and the reason you put the date is because in 10 years from now you're gonna look OMG I made that in 2020 Wow okay and you'll see how oh my gosh that looks not good I just I'm being really super particular um, but yes yeah, so many things I didn't put the date that I regret because I started painting so many years ago and it's nice when you come back and you see them so I just put 2020 and you don't need to do that and I'm not even in love with it maybe I won't I won't make it 2020 I'll make it just a 20 because we know it's 2020 it wouldn't be 1920 I wasn't here Anywho, I will be back to just show you a quick varnishing. I'm gonna I'm gonna redo the summer. I'm gonna paint that another coat, and I'll be back with a varnishing video, you guys. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed this. Happy summer! Thanks for watching. <laughs>